Fashion News opens its fashion vaults to the most important, influential, and trend-setting designers of the last 30 years. Designer Marathon brings you a unique chronicle of the milestone moments, the landmark collections, the exhibitions, the favorite models, and the creative process behind every designer's career. From the first to the last, from the shocking to the classic, follow the evolution of the world's top designers from rising star to fashion icon. It's all here in the vault, a retro spectacular timeline, a designer marathon. With her roots in the punk movement, subversive has always been a buzzword for the designs of Vivian Westwood. But while her clothes may challenge traditional sensibilities, they are also grounded in reverence for that same tradition, drawing heavily on historical dress and classic British fabrics. You know, she's been made a dame, so she's Dame Vivian Westwood, you know, made that by the Queen, and yet. We regard her also as the high priestess of punk. Uh, it's such a dichotomy of images, but that very dichotomy is reflected in her clothing. Although she had no formal fashion training, Westwood has matured as one of the most respected and influential designers in the world. Each season for over 30 years, Westwood has explored cutting and breaking techniques, seeking to give new form and expression to the body. My job is about manipulating cloth to give expression to the body and um, it's very unusual for people to work in the way that I work with these little dolls and to work in three dimensions all the time. The thing I'm most proud of, if anything, is, is my cut and historically I have really contributed to the fashion vocabulary in terms of cut. I made clothes that didn't fit, asymmetrical clothes that fell off the body but that still had a rapport with the body. Westwood's progressive, avant-garde style is coveted by fashion lovers all over the world, fueling the growth of her business into a veritable fashion empire, including her high-end gold label, the younger Anglomania and Red Label collections, as well as shoes, bags, fragrances, and jewelry. I have never um, let people um, um, get away with saying that my clothes aren't commercial. I do think that they, they are. Um, I think they're possibly more commercial now than they used to be because people's eye needs to get adjusted to do things and it takes time but I think the gap between my doing something and people wanting it is shorter than it used to be. As a matter of fact our business just increases all the time. I'm one of the people who offers fashion um, you can wear something that nobody's ever seen before and you can be on the edge of something that never happened in the way you look. And that's what I do. One English designer who always looks to the past is Vivian Westwood. I've always been interested in the coquetry of the 18th century and 17th and 19th and um, it was a bit daunting because the clothes from this period are so grand and important and unrelenting in their sort of geometry that one wonders how one can sort of manipulate it. But as soon as you do, um, then you discover um, such a fund of um, rich ideas. Women really should stop trying to be like men. We don't need men's point of view. We do need women's point of view. And, and the, unfortunately, all the ambitious women are behaving like men, so nothing changes. Women should be more manipulative and they should use their sexual power to get what they want and to get as much time for themselves to think and pamper themselves and, and care about their brains but, yeah, and about the brains of the people that they influence. The 19th century 
was a telescoping of all history through imperial eyes. And so looking at it from modern eyes, it's different and it's, it becomes more flirtatious because women are allowed, again, I think, to be flirtatious. Yeah. So, for me, woman's power is in manipulation more than direct attack. Mm. And, and uh, sex and coquetry is always in closing. I don't expect you can change very much through clothes, but I think it's important to try even with, with clothes because it's good to have this choice. Showing her younger Red Label collection in London for the second season, Vivian Westwood combined her signature saucy tailoring with surprisingly straightforward sportswear. She was the first in the last two decades to take the dare and to create something that was conceptual and unique that, you know, the world took notice of. She almost invented modern English fashion, if you really want to know what I think. It's got this feeling of this rather punk thing combined with, um, with tailoring. It's called, really, The English Girl Abroad. And so it's the kind of thing, you know, when they go on holiday and then they get all into the culture of the land that they're in and they come back wearing bits of it. People will be quite shocked how um, beautiful and how, you know, high profile the actual collection is this year. It's a lot more classic than I think it has been in past years. She's toned it down and kept more to the shape and to the um, cuts. I always like young girls to dress up older than they really would do normally in this age. I don't like them to look like babies. I'm very excited to be here. I love her. She's my very favourite. I know a lot of people wouldn't wear them because they're quite far out and quite over the top. You have to have balls to wear them, but some of them are definitely wearable for the street. You can adapt them really well to high street things. I always try to make things a little bit more tasteful or a little bit more complicated. Without Vivian, you couldn't have the expression of Alexander McQueen, John Galliano, Antonio Barardi. All of these people owe some sort of homage to Vivian Westwood. Always informed by history, this season Vivian Westwood referenced old masters and a vivid modern art palette for an alluring spring vision. All the clothes have a dynamic with the body and everybody's got their own body and the clothes all do these wonderful things. It's kind of technical more than anything else but um, certainly the references are to be inspired by the um, wonderful standards of excellence from the past. The inspiration really was the second wife of Rubens. He was 50-something when he married her and she was 16. And the photograph, she's only 17. And she is just so stylish, but such an individual woman and so sexy. And um, paying so much attention to her and how she looks. no reason to try to be like everybody else and boring. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's all about attractiveness, coquetry, flirtation. Basic colours like grey, but it's like grey on grey, black on black, texture and surface. A little bit like painter's canvas, it's true. And um, so flesh, grey, black, white, and ultramarine was a basic colour because you're right, there was a Matisse reference, but then you got a whole orgy of colour after that.
I always start a collection with knitwear because it's one of the first things that you see. Before you see fabric, you see some yarn. And so the knitwear, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's me, that's it. <laughs> made by a tube of elastic net and then just had to tie ribbons on it in the right places. She was Flora, you know, giving her blessing to the spring because this is a spring collection. I think it's important that I, as a woman designer, I do think that I give women what only a woman can do for them. I do think I have a feeling about what makes women sexually powerful. This season, Westwood continues her search for the couture of a woman's body. Somehow it's always changing. And um, it was technical, the work. This is why it changes, because I'm working technically all the time. And I just had this idea of a diamond and making the fabric travel around the diamond. And so in the end, my collection looks very Venice, very Harlequin, but it really, to me, very futuristic. I just knew that if I used this little triangle, I could get fabric to drape in a certain way. And so I exploited it like that. But I was kind of glad to use it as well because it's geometry and it's abstract. There were all these diamonds and everything, but that started off essentially as a way of draping fabric by making fabric travel around a small square. And in that way, it started to go around the bust and to fall off and do things. And then that was an effect I got through draping, but um, then I used the same effect for stiffer fabrics to give all these cl clothes that look like sort of soft cubes, you know, that were around. There were these little cubes and things which seemed to sort of ignore the breast and go sort of away from it, but by very fact of doing that, seemed to talk about it even more because there's all this play of fabric around. And um, so you're always, always talking about the body in new ways. And I think that's obviously always sexy and stimulating. I wanted to keep, essentially, the base of the clothes quite dark. Um, and to put on that dark base, jewel colours. And this is why I thought of this diamond idea. I wanted the idea that somehow, in, in folk, in folk costumes, it relies so much on embroidery and handwork for its effect, because it's very simple cutting in the end. Definitely the idea of jewellery and the way that you cut jewels was, was the feeling I wanted to achieve in the very clothes themselves. I had the idea that I wanted the woman to look like she came from a place in the world that had not yet been discovered, but yet a place of high culture. British provocateur Vivian Westwood set the stage in New York for her diffusion line, Red Label. The kind of hairstyle that we're going to do is one where it's a girl who likes to dance. The inspiration that Vivian was going with was sort of that girl that's all pressed up, looking beautiful, and she's gone out for the night, but she's rocked the night away, so there's, it's a tassel and a mess. The kind of makeup we did. I just took this sort of cue from the idea of footlights in, you know, stages. So it's going to look very wild and exciting. It's kind of Moulin Rouge and Toulouse Tech, and it's slightly punky and rock and roll at the same time, which is very Vivian Westwood. But the great things are the clothes. Anyway, you only have to put them on. Staying true to her eclectic roots, Westwood's line for spring encompassed everything from 80s leggings to 40s sundresses. People often ask me who I have in mind when I'm designing, and it is always me anyway, in one mode or another. This girl is not really me. I always admired those kind of girls who used to get up and dance on the cafe table and, you know, do very dangerous things. 
So she's that kind of a girl. It's very colourful and um, we have kind of like lots of colours that kind of hurt each other and dirty colours that you can't even know what colour it is. Of course the sort of key to what I do is tailoring. The clothes fit as well. At least they have a very big rapport with the body because the clothes, the way I work is very physical. It's the manipulation of materials and then you see something starting to happen that you're after and then you take the character from it and it gives a woman a lot of chance to play because different clothes do different things, you know. When I was younger, if I would have had access to such great clothes, I would have felt I was in paradise. One of the great advantages of, of my job is that I get to wear the best possible clothes. Vivian Westwood abandoned the theatrical nature of past collections in favor of a softer spring that relied on precision construction. As usual, I didn't have a theme. A lot of the time, you make up the theme at the last moment, pretend that you had it from the beginning because it makes it easy to talk about. But if I had anything in mind, it was starting with this feeling of satyrs and nymphs because I always loved that. <laughs> But essentially, it is technical, and there are two cutting systems in there. One is based on a rectangle, and one is based on a semicircle, and it's the trickery that um, is involved in making that. It's very, very simple geometry to start with, and you get these very strong but quite basic principles going. One was essentially a rectangle, which was sewn crooked, and another one was a big circle, which, when you sort of gathered, it came into a puffy effect. They were essentially the two things. Apropos of that, there are clothes with wine stains on them and grass stains on them and jewellery made of little bugs crawling over your flies and ants and spiders and snails. It's very, very artistic, the clothes, but never, never in my life have I tried to make a woman look like an art object. Something that a woman just puts it on and then everything is done for her and her whole body starts to feel good and she just feels the most sexy creature in the world. It's a real turn on, you know. Lightness, light of hand, looser hand. Vivian at her best, still doing Vivian, but a lightness of hand, a lightness of being, a softer Vivian, a more fragile Vivian. So it's very, very light, lots of lovely subtle colours, very, very tender, helpful, pretty, dirty, destroyed, very, very sort of unprecious. Women are beautiful and the greatest aid to beauty are clothes. If they don't turn you on, if they're not sexy, then, you know, then for me, I, have, I haven't done my job. Westwood's clothing always incorporates references of the past, which she whimsically reworks and suggests for the present. On a runway landscape with old clothes, this London renegade experimented with volume and layering for autumn. I wanted this rustic, noble feeling, like people came from somewhere that's never not been discovered yet. I wanted every silhouette different, like you get in folk costume, you know, where it's from one village to the next, they're wearing totally different things. When you take the idea of folk costume, which is very rich and all hand done and all traditional, and it, this is where, why you get this rich feeling, you can't do that obviously, so you have to do it by some sort of logic. So it's all a question of the choice of fabrics and what you put with what. I play with volume a lot. Sometimes it's got three waists, even it's got something coming from here, from here, and then some volume coming out on the hip, something coming out from here. 
We always have very traditional fabrics, basic fabrics anyway, but um, also I used, in order to get this volume I'm speaking of, I use very, very light wools, but they're not, they don't look terribly light because they're quite thick. There are coats and you pick them up and they're as light as a cardigan, they're as light as a feather. They're very, very airy and lots of volume in them, but incredibly light. In the end I sort of made a landscape out of old clothes because I just somehow, for whatever reason, it, there is no reason, but I just know that it, it helps the clothes and it helps them feel as if they've, they've sort of on this adventurous march coming from somewhere. Up in full swing, Vivian Westwood was ready for another intellectual presentation. Many of the ideas were directly translated onto the prints. And we have several prints. We have a Bruegel flower painting. To me, his flower paintings are a wonder. They're the most, some of the most precious paintings in the world. And um, then we have another print, which we call the exploration print. Now then, I live in a house that Captain Cook's mother used to live in. And so I, I imagined that when Captain Cook went on his voyage of discovery, that somebody in, in his team would be keeping a notebook and taking specimens of all the exotic flora and fauna that they found. So I tried to discover some old pictures and this kind of thing, and I put them all together on a print as if they would be the pages of this notebook of all the strange animals in the world. It's a photograph of a bookcase in my house where I keep my favourite books. And so, unfortunately, some of the titles didn't quite come out, but otherwise you would have a programme for life of what to read for ideas. They're all my favourite things, which I keep, especially in one place, in case of fire, because that's the first thing I would rescue. So, and, it, and it's really lovely, this geometry that the books make when, when you put them on the, on the garments. A lot of them really are out of print anyway, but I have a whole, um, there's quite a lot of French books, but I have a whole series of Anatole France and um, a lot of Aldous Huxley and, well, I have everything, I think, and um, Bertrand Russell, Pr Proust, of course, but um, I don't know, I have some wonderful little anthropology books. One is called Jocasta's Crime. There is a lot of volume, but then the fabric is like travelling off on its own and it, it's sort of working with the body. And essentially, I, I worked with a spiral and a square meander and just somehow or other <laughs> did things that, on, in the case of the spiral, were very round and curvy and in the case of the meander were very geometric. But, um, of course, we work with the body. And then, then apart from that, we have really lovely tailleur, really, really great. One of the, the jackets is great because working on this spiral idea, there's just one seam that goes round here to the back. So in fact, you only have two pieces apart from the sleeves because you have one piece that goes in front all around and then the other piece that just fills in the gap and it fits incredible. There's a lot of intense colour and a lot of prints juxtaposed one with another as well. But of course then you have these lovely dirty effects of colours you can't really describe. We start off very colourful with the prints and we end the show in dirty things that almost disappear away from colour. For her autumn winter collection, Vivian Westwood continued her affair with volume. Fabrics were shaped into Baroque silhouettes, and wild animal prints adorned models head to toe. The collection is very difficult to describe because every dress, every silhouette is different, and there's an awful lot of volume. 
um, in different ways. If you're using a taffeta, it can have a small waist and enormous sleeves and a big skirt. Or um, if it's in a viscous, then it's more frenetic and working around. And it's just a sort of cutting method that I could, you can just go on and on with it forever and every time you work with it, it produces something different. So it's very jolly and it's very, very much talking about the body, even more than usual probably. And so therefore very sexy. Knit cardigans embellished with embroidery offered a sparkle for day dressing. We have everything. We have everything from recycled sweatshirts to taffeta to chiffon, all the English tweeds, um, overprinted with tiger designs. I, I, I mean, everything is kind of metamorphosizing. It's all changing and going into something else. I've got a brilliant pair of trousers. Um, there's so much volume in these trousers and they're very, very masculine. And then there's a woman in a corset and it looks again like a metamorphosis that the, that the man is changing to a woman. It's just really great. The best thing about my job is I get great clothes to wear. Vivian Westwood grand dame of avant-garde lived up to her image this season in Paris. She created an otherworldly atmosphere with nymph-like models floating down her runway. The ethereal quality to makeup and hair also set the tone. There's a lot of theatrical things happening in the show and Vivian was inspired by a photograph which is very beautiful of um, a sort of dreamy photograph of the eyes all looking um, very shaded underneath with long lashes and everything looking down and from that she named her show Nymph. So hence the background and, this, and the wonderful kind of as Lord of the Rings setting and this makeup which is meant to represent the girls coming out from the woods from behind. So with these kind of very Bambi eyes so you couldn't see hardly see through them like these little creatures that come out from the woods. We work very very hard on this show it has a lot of really new forms and plus, of course, some classic things. For example, I like very much the little twin set, but made in fabric, like it had really been to the laundry. I mean, they were very, very chic for summer. These just reworking classic things. I mean, we do that a lot. It was so romantic, and the fabrics were really rustic, but rustic things are always very noble as well you can have the finest silk in there and live in an old castle you can still be rustic and um, but nevertheless we just thought it was so sexy and so organic everything that we decided to call it nymphs to be apolitical as well we wanted to be because fashion is a, a dream and it's it's um it's a little window on a better world hopefully what you saw today um, but anyway, so we decided that these, these um, girls should look a little bit animal with long Bambi eyelashes because they're caring for the animals and the forests and the pools and the rocks. And uh, this is why they're called nymphs. There's a fluidity somehow because you can mix and match things, but we had very, very curvy fluid things. And then we had some giant jackets where the sleeves were almost like boxes and slightly 50 skirts with them um, sometimes, you know, with a small waist and hips and swing. But of course, every time you, we didn't plan that it should look like that, but every fashion look has a little bit of nostalgia because fashion is always recreating itself out of what already exists. opening of her exhibition at London's prestigious Victoria and Albert Museum, Vivian Westwood presented one of her strongest collections to date. The show is called Exhibition and it's about 
going into my archive. So this is the retrospective of 34 years work. You know, we have a retrospective, but we're still inventing and carrying on. I mean, it really is a synthesis. There's a, I, I pick up on thing, themes that, are, that I really do like. For example, there are things that button in the back. They're all new and um, they're made out of one piece of fabric. I always like to do that. The impression that those things give is of a very strong woman because you, it's a little bit like armour. You can't, you know, you can't undo it at the front. It's only at the back. And so you, you have a strong presence, but um, it's also a bit vulnerable because it's a little bit bondage as well because it's mm -hmm. fastened in the back. And if you like, somebody you can undo it yourself, but it's nice if somebody undoes it for you. There are coats that are made out of blankets with nothing wasted. If you want to put it back into a blanket, you could. Because I've been doing this research about some people who live really near the North Pole with all these animal skins, coats and stuff, I got very interested in that and I just somehow thought Mongolia. And so it is this sort of fighting woman from Mongolia, but in the end she's in the city, so it's something very noble and rustic, but in the end it's very Eurocentric and brought to Europe and in the city in the end, so it's a bit kinky as well. Somebody asked me once, what is fashion? And I said, fashion is about eventually being naked. And I think eventually is the most important word there. There, you know, it's about slowly, you know, if you're, you know. And in fact, when people asked me that question, it was a Japanese person who said, oh, would you like everybody to be naked? And I said, in my case, could I have a pair of high heel shoes? <laughs> of punk and lover of all things historical, Vivian Westwood is no rebel without a cause. Ask Westwood the meaning of her politically provocative tea and you'll see that this royal renegade is not afraid to state her mind. This says, I am not a terrorist, please don't arrest me. I want the British people to use their imagination at the moment People can be arrested, never told what they did wrong, and detained indefinitely. And I just want them to think what it, they, how they would feel if it was their son or their child. Because actually, these laws don't make us more safe. They make our country more dangerous. One has to admire her passion. With a summer collection called Active Resistance to Propaganda, Westwood was proposing a revolution with graphic messages barely concealed in the clothes. It's all together, really. And, for, and so it's got lots of graphics, because, and they're all mixed in with quite 17th century looks, space age looks. But the feeling I wanted to create with the fashion show is that there is a secret revolution going on. Maybe these people were one-time soldiers in Vietnam who stayed in the jungle and, and then they started reading and now they've come to town or, I don't know, just some secret revolution that's going on because it is going on. My wider campaign, this active resistance, what that is about, it's saying, it's trying to encourage the people who think to understand that they are not alone, that they are actually part of a resistance movement. Because every time they go to the theatre instead of going to the cinema or watching TV, or if they go to an art gallery, if they read a magazine, look up a word in the dictionary, they are thinking. And all these things are incremental. And so it's, you know, every political opinion comes with a, with a label. And the future depends on people who think because the world will be, will have no culture, we're moving away from civilization, but it will also be a political hell 
as well if people don't start thinking. she proved once again why she's still contentious after more than 30 years in the business. Well, it's a very good idea for a fashion designer to do a collection called I Am Expensive because the clothes are expensive and hopefully they're worth what they are. What this is about, it's about a, a doll because this is what we do in fashion, we play with dolls and you have a little world where it's all so ideal and this is how you would love people to look. You can play around with their hair and cut it and do all kinds of things with them. And this is what I do in a fashion show anyway. But this is kind of a doll that comes in a box like a Barbie. And so this doll is saying she's very, very spoiled and precious. She's got a hole in her head. And it's like, I am expensive and I am subsidised by all the poor people in the world. And I would like to marry a prince or a millionaire and I'm going to have a wonderful life and I'm so lucky. So it's all to do with being tied up like a wonderful parcel, a precious little thing. And it's to do with scale and volume. If you've got a little doll and it has a lace dress, the lace is far too big for the doll. <laughs> so I made a lace that's too big for a woman. And it's really good, she's naked underneath it, and it's just fantastic. What I like about the hairstyle, it's a style people could do for themselves. They can put their own hair and then plonk some colour on it, you know. I mean, it's, it's a good idea. I like ideas like that, to play around. There's a grey cape there, which is one of my favourite outfits, because it's just a bit of fabric round your top and a bit of fabric round your skirt. I just think it's brilliant. And it's like a doll's outfit, it's just really simple. But sometimes it can be a bit more complicated. It's just really, really playing around. I've had an incredible influence on fashion, I know that, for good or bad. Currently celebrating 35 years in the fashion business, Dame Vivian Westwood had a chance to look back at those years when she contributed to a major touring retrospective exhibition of her work. When I saw the clothes that we did edit from this 30 years of work, I was really knocked out by how really great they are. I sort of make clothes that look couture by machine methods. And what this has done, it's made people who don't have any technical skill think that they can just make clothes by just throwing things together. Because my things do look like that. They do look like angels just pinned them somehow they got there. The day before her fall show, we stopped by Vivian's Paris Atelier to see how final fittings were going. The show is really long. It's about 80 outfits, and we would love to get it down to 60. And the show is called Wake Up, Cave Woman. And where my politics comes into this is that I've been trying to say that we're victims of propaganda and that we don't have any culture, and that the, we can't have progress unless you see culture in a human way. I've done all of this in London. This is my running order. Then we're at the stage now where we have to see if they work and whether, you know, we want to change them in any way. It's really like a little sweater because it's got all these little holes perforated. This is um, a bull skin off a cave wall, some cave printing. 
We're trying the looks on and we're making sure we like them, which shoes go with them. Everything makes a difference. So that's a little skirt, for example, that all buttons together with this looking like it's made from a skin. And that's a little jacket. And we've got waspies that pull you really in because we want this silhouette where your arms really hang off you and you've got this exaggerated, wonderful female proportion as well. Super woman, sort of. We've done fantastic hand knits. This is actually crochet, but, you know, this is really good. Things like that. Vivian comes from a family of weavers, lace makers, and dressmakers. I'm born in a time when people could sew, seven years old. We had sewing once, one afternoon a week. When we went to the grammar school at age 10, then we did machine sewing. We made ourselves some machine clothes, only for one year. Then we did cookery after that. Got sweaters, you know, that have got these things that just really stand out. It's like you've got a bus, but it's got all air in it. It reminds you a bit of the 50s when people stuff their bras and things. I try to exploit the technology. If I'm doing hand knits, I try to do something that a machine can't do. But if I'm doing machine knits, I try to do something that the machine can do that the hands can't do. This little sweater, when it's on, it makes a really, really good shape. It gives you this sort of silhouette, you know? A beautiful colour, this. And this is just a piece of fabric, this cape, with a big scarf threaded through the neck and it's just, I love it. This is the outfit I'm going to have. I'm going to have this outfit next year. Well, we've got um, these little rather historical waistcoats. Even though it's based on something 18th century, for some reason we think it fits in. You know, I like these funny proportions and really into shoulders as well because I just like the way that if you have these shoulders, your, your arms hang off like a kind of Barbie doll, you know? It's beautiful from the side as well. We've put little pins in because we're going to take it in a little bit for the models, because you've got this waspy underneath. And then, it, then it's like this. It's, I think it's just lovely. Can you walk again, please? Okay. Thanks. You just work and work on them and you get them so that that is saying what you want to say. It's like, I expect it's, you could compare yourself to a poet, that you are trying to, to reduce this whole idea into itself. Awaited homecoming brought out excited rows of it girls and industry insiders. That's great, really, really excited. Nine years, hasn't it been? I think it's ten or nine years. I think it's nine years, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Vivian Westwood isn't just the earth mother of all fashion, but she has a very special role here, and we're all delighted to have her back. Because really all of London started with her. This is where the Vivian Westwood myth was born. She's the high priestess of punk and she is back on home territory. Her legacy goes back 35 years. She's such a rebel, I mean, even at her age. She's really sort of from the era when fashion was a, a political statement. You don't see too many designers doing that now. She was one of the first people that showed, you know, how you could be very kind of anarchic, but also very knowledgeable about fashion. She did uh, the wardrobe for a film I did called Shadow Boxer with Helen Mirren, and she had us all dressed out. It's just, it's just beautiful, elegant high neck collars and just the cut of her suits are impeccable. She made clothes for women, you know, and, and if you don't have hips 
for it, like a, a curvy figure, it will give you one. Or if you have one, it works with it. She's a complete and utter maverick, a revolutionary, a radical, and fashion needs people like that. Vivian Westwood's renegade ways continued in Paris for the presentation of her signature gold label. The experimental designer enlisted the artistic talents of young children to embellish the parade of jungle warrior women. And there were only seven, and there were 36 of them, and this lady, she, a lot of them were just painting. Vivian has been working with some kids in Nottingham in England. So they did sort of like a project on painting and she has sent them some garments and helped them do some designing for the collection. So basically they give them the sheets of paper and they draw faces and they put, they did this makeup on, on the faces which Vivian gave me and told me okay how can we interpret this makeup. What's important here is that it's a very free-handed, um, free spirit makeup. I think it's about being free and let things just surprise us. The children, yeah, we just let them. I gave them this brief. I told them to do some research on Che Guevara a little bit because I thought that would give them an idea of what it would be like to fight in the jungle. I told them about Vietnam, where people might be underneath the floor and you fall into a trap. All these things I told them and they just got on with it. I wanted it all to look very magical and I imagine these people were some soldiers one time who were fighting in the jungle and they decided to stay there and they discovered the secret of the forest. Our science, our scientists, have put our planet on a crash course. The show is called Chaos Point, and that's because possibly the damage is irreversible, but we hope not, and we need a new ethic. And it's all to do with that the human beings are much more wonderful than scientists think we are.